Okay, so this is a supplemental video to uh, assist in the uh, B pickup item. Uh, got feedback that there wasn't enough detail in the prior video series for this particular piece of the solution. So we'll put together this short uh, supplemental video and post it up alongside the, the main series. But the, uh, the basic mechanics is when you're in your UI and you drag an item to your drop icon, it will fire this uh, gameplay ability drop uh, ability, which performs a number of checks, but essentially spawns this pickup item into the world and then uh, sets physics on, enables gravity on it, adds a small impulse to push it away from the player. And then basically we check that it stops moving and then we make it static. So the the gameplay ability is probably where I stopped the last series and I didn't explain what was happening inside the actor, where the actor was created, etc. So if we look at that particular actor, we will see that it inherits from Lyra World Collectibles Plus. And the plus is our nomenclature when we change a standard uh, Lyra actor, which in this case, Lyra World Collectibles is the standard Lyra. The plus donates our change. And the reason we had to do that is if you look at Epic's code for the Lyra World Collectible, um, you'll see that it has, um, it's an actor, it's interactable, and it's pick up a bowl. Um, those are the core parents of the Lyra World Collectible. And then it just has these uh, very few functions. So that's all the collectible does. And it has very little code. We needed more code. So if you look at our plus, what we did is we copied the Lyra World Collectible and renamed it as plus. Um, we added this message fragment, which is used for the payload when we, uh, so yeah, we added this struct, which is used when you send the message through to the gameplay ability. The plus is still an actor, an interactable and pickup. Uh, these are the same. They are just copy and paste from Epic. But we added uh, these functions. And these functions are primarily to allow us to set the pickup inventory. So the Lyra World Collectible assumes that the inventory is preset in the level and that at runtime, you have no method to actually set what the inventory is. And we needed when we're dropping it to be able to set a specific inventory. So we needed a way to add this piece of code. Um, we've got a, is it active and uh, how to activate and deactivate. So those three kind of work together. A check to see if it's active, a function to activate it, a function to deactivate it. And then we have our on interact, uh, on activated and on deactivated as uh, implemental events. Those came from Epic. We added our switch and we added our activation uh, rep, right? So this switch, which is being set on the server, gets replicated to the client via this on rep activation, which is this function here. So if we go to the C++ file, uh, we assume we're replicating. This is the Lyra code, that's the Lyra code. Um, here we take our new inventory that's coming through our function and setting the inventory here. This is the piece of code that was non-existent. Here we're toggling our activate flag on and off, between on and off. Simple check to what the value is. And then our, re our replication, if we're active, we call on activate. If we're deactive, we call deactivate. And then of course the replication of the active flag. So the simple Lyra world collectible gets extended slightly to enable activation and deactivation and the ability to set a pickup.
So that's the C++ changes that we made, which allows us here. So let's go with the drop. So when, when we drop something, the payload uh, comes in. We simply parse that payload into an item instance. So that's just a simple uh, function we have in, in Blueprint. All it's doing is taking that payload, committing the ability, casting it to an item and returning that item. We check that we're on the server. We check that we're allowed to drop it. We get our inventory manager. And this is where we spawn the actor into the world, right? Then upon successful spawning of the actor into the world, we take it out of our quick bar in case it was in the quick bar, because it might have been an item that was already in the quick bar or also in the quick bar. We remove the item instance from our inventory manager and we tell the grids to refresh. So the piece that is probably missing is that inside this spawn new actor, right, we're getting our fragment. From that, we're grabbing all the basic elements of our pickup. So this is this is our inventory icon, which has uh, these variables uh, set for when we drop something into the world. What class do we want to drop? What particle effect do we want to show? Should it decay over time? If it does decay over time, how long should it stay in the world? What's the mesh going to look like because it's different by item? And then where do we where do we drop it offset from the character? So all of those come out of the item definition fragment, and they go in to the exposed parameters on the B pickup item. So B pickup exposes these parameters. We then spawn this actor into the world. We do a quick static mess setup. And we turn on, this is what we just showed a minute ago. We then turn on gravity so that it falls to the ground. So now the pickup item, again, being a child of the world collectible plus, um, when that kicks off its begin play, remember all these parameters have been set uh, from, uh, set from the, Those were all set here. So when we on begin play, all those values are set. So we check and then basically just set the mesh, set the transform, set the inventory. If we want to show particle effects, we enable particle effects or disable particle effects, which is just simply activating or deactivating this Niagara effect. So if you look at the viewport, this is the uh, static mesh, which will change based on what we're dropping. And this is the particle effect that is uh, by default running unless we pass in a different one. So we either turn that on or off. We, if we enable decay, obviously we set a, a lifespan timer for when this thing should be destroyed. And then we call the parent function. If we do want it to decay out of the world, we basically, uh, once that timer, once it expires, so let's say it decays after five seconds, you have five seconds to pick it up or else it's gonna, it's gonna decay. Uh, this event gets triggered. We turn off the particle effects. We shrink it down its size. We basically shrink it from a scale of, of one down to zero um, to give you that uh, visualization. And after it's done shrinking, we just go ahead and destroy the act. Uh, what else is there? Setting up the pickup elements is pretty simple. It's just a function to set those various elements which are replicated to the client. So the location and the mesh being set on the server are replicated to the client through the on rep notifies. And uh, we did begin play already. What else do we have down here? Uh, all right, so when we enable motion uh, and check for movement. So the check for movement once we enable motion, which is uh, 
done on the tree. So it's done on that tree somewhere. Okay. Once we enable motion, we kick off another event that is basically looking for when the object stops moving. So if you drop something, gravity will pull it to the ground. It might rock around a little bit. Eventually it will stabilize. Um, and so once it's movement is within, you know, 0 0.001, we assume it has stabilized. So we disable movement um, and then lock it into location. So this, this basically allows us to use gravity to move it to the ground. But once it hits the ground, we just disable it so that if you kick it, it doesn't move. So you want to, once it's stabilized and on the ground, you basically want to clear your movement handle, turn off your physics, turn off your gravity, um, you know, basically lock your uh, mesh into location uh, and lock your rotation. Make sure your particles are pointing straight up because uh, they'll bounce around as you move it. Uh, and I think that's it. And then clear the variable. So this is simply saying after I've stopped moving, just make it static so that if I run into it, I'm not dealing with collision and gravity and all those things. So that's the basics of the pickup object. Again, overriding the Lyra world collectible, basically to enable the activation, deactivation, and the setting of the uh, setting of the inventory, which is uh, this function right here. Right, this is what did not exist in the Lyra World Collectible, which we added uh, to be able to do this so that we could pass in inventory and then that inventory would be would replace the static inventory variable so that when we get it upon pickup, we're getting whatever we passed in. So hopefully that's helpful. Thanks for watching.